Oh, okay. Okay, and I'm going on live on um, Facebook soon. Uh, this meeting is being recorded. Got it. Okay. Okay. okay wait. You have enough water. We're in live stream. Okay, the meeting is being live streamed. All right. Good Hi. afternoon, everyone. And hello, Sarisa. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? I am very good. I just did my yoga this morning. So that always balances me and make me feel great. And to my audience, I just want to say thank you so much for joining the You Are Able podcast. This is the podcast where I feature you know, really good friends such as Teresa and sometimes acquaintances that I've never ever met in my life except for online. But all the people that I feature on my podcast are people that I personally enjoy talking to and that I feel that I have something to learn from. And all of them have stories. We're always filled with stories. And my background as a TV presenter and a news anchor is somebody who loves to hear stories from people because to me, that is one way for me to learn from another perspective without having to go through that perspective. And today I wanted to introduce my good friend, Sarisa. And I just wanna give you a very, very quick intro and then I'll let her introduce herself before we get into you know, the questions. Sarisa, I met Sarisa maybe like two or three years ago and uh, at a friend's party. And her style of communication and the way that she is, is just very chill, very open. And I did not feel that she was trying to hide or pretend to be somebody else. Um, and I'm not attracted to those type of people. So Sarisa is somebody that I feel was very authentic and she's very chill. And she was just telling the truth about who she is when I met her. And that's what attracted me initially to her. Now, Sarisa is an amazing woman and I don't really know how she does it, but she's a mother of four amazing, beautiful boys. And she's also a um, restaurant owner. She's an entrepreneur, uh, two places, which are very famous in Phuket, the Napoleon Bakery and also the Maison Napoleon. So once again, welcome, Sarisa. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so how about you introduce yourself a little bit to our audience? Introduce myself. Yeah. You, you want to say something? <laughs> um, my, where I'm from, what do I do? Like, what, what do I yeah, say? You can, well, you can, you, I mean, you, you are a multinational beauty. Um, you're Japanese, German, Thai. Right. Well, I grew up in Bangkok. I mean, just to do a real quick, I'm an international kind of third, third baby thing. My mom's Thai, my dad's American. And I mainly, I, I grew up in, in Bangkok and um, we moved to Phuket about six years ago with our family, our three boys. I had my fourth boy here, our fourth son here. Um, my boys are nine and seven and six and three, all boys. Woo. Woo. Very quite close together, yeah. Yeah, really high energy. <laughs> along with um, running my two restaurants here on the island with my husband and my business partners. Yes, um, your husband, Jonathan. Yeah. My husband, Jonathan. Yeah. Yeah. So we're all, yeah, we're, we're we have a pretty chaotic, busy lifestyle with, uh, with having to run our own businesses and, and having four very young, high energy boys at home. Yeah. Yeah. I yes. I remembered there was a time when I had uh, one restaurant and yes. I have two boys and they were, you know, like uh, Sarisa's kids age at the time, young. And um, I remember that in that year, back in 2015, I was moving so fast. And I can also yes. say that my life was quite chaotic because of the demand that I placed on myself. Um, yes. that the only time that I, cause I had this constant dizziness that I had developed and that dizziness happened for, it stayed with me for more than a year. And there was actually like a, a term for it, but I cannot remember at the time, but I just felt like I was constantly dizzy. And the only time that I did not feel dizzy was when I was driving forward in my car. And that dizziness was because I was rushing so much. I was rushing, rushing, rushing so much. And it was because of the motion that I have created for my, within myself that the only time that I didn't feel it when I was when I was sleeping 
Yeah, that was in 2015. And it was 2015, 2016 was one of the, like the worst year health wise yeah. in my life because I was trying to catch up to all the things that I felt I was supposed to do as a mother, yes. the responsibilities that you have when you have, when you're a wife. And that depends obviously on your relationship with your husband, right? Um, yeah, how understanding he is. It's all, there's got to be a, a certain level of responsibility. Right, yeah. right. Whether yeah. big or small. Yeah, exactly. And, um, but I don't want to go into too much of, of me or my story because this is mainly about Sarisa and I want to hear her story. Um, even though sometimes I will try to relate to, you know, what yeah. Sharice is, is saying, well, but it was, it was, sorry. Yeah. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Nothing. nothing. No, nothing. Oh. I was just um, relating to your, what you said about health. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how do you I feel? I mentioned to you just before we did our, just before yeah. we went live that yeah. my, um, my, I was really sick a couple of weeks ago. I had a bad cold actually. Yeah. But, um, but I felt like I had a very, very foggy, like my mind was completely foggy. I couldn't think straight. And I was feeling very um, like dizzy, like you were saying. Huh. And I'm trying, and, and I, it made me realize that um, if I don't have my health together, I'm unable to balance all the things that I need to do in my life. It, it takes a, a huge toll on you if you don't have your health yeah to um to be able to focus on taking care of the children and all the stresses that come with having a restaurant yeah, yeah. um you uh if your mind isn't clear because you're not physically well or you're sick you um you don't have anything like you can't be present for your family and you can't be present for your businesses yeah or your forget business. about forget about business or forget about caring about other people because if you cannot, like my grandma said, and this is just an analogy that my grandma gave, she said that if you're so sick and you're standing two feet from a piece of gold, you cannot even bend over to pick up the piece of gold. And that gold can be your children. That gold can be your dream. That gold can be, you know, like, you know, wanting to create uh, or yeah. follow your heart, but you would not be able to do that if you don't have your health. And whenever people do ask me yeah. for advice, which is, there are quite a few people who ask me for, advi or for advice, but a lot of people do not want to appear as if they need help. Um, yeah. But when they do, I always say the same thing to them. You have to take care of yourself first. Uh, and you've always mentioned that to me, but I never yeah. had understood it because I was, I didn't hit any sort of wall yet. You know, right. I hadn't even caught a cold actually in the past couple years yeah it's because you're still it's because you're still young right I'm, I'm not comparing myself to you when I say that you are young but you are still young and you're a young mother you know yeah. so the body can still yeah. um try to cut you know like to to fix itself quicker right yeah. compared yeah. to if you are a mother who is in their 40s or in their late 30s but now let me go back into the first question the one I asked you and that is mm -hmm. you have four boys and obviously you have partners that help you with your restaurant. So it's not only you. Yeah. And whenever I see you, I can tell that you have your hands full, your plates are full. How do you manage all of the things that are on your plate? What do you mean by how do I manage? When I read that question. <laughs> emotionally, let's say emotionally. Well, yeah. see, that, that's, what, um, that's what I had, was mentioning to you earlier. I hadn't, I haven't had the time to really reflect, but actually being sick allowed me to, <laughs> because I just yeah. had to with my thoughts because I couldn't. You have time to move. think. Yeah. So, you know, everything happens for a reason. There's always something good in everything bad. And so when I, when I, um, had the time to, to, to re reflect a little bit, um, I realize that I actually do need to um, have uh, allotments of time throughout the day or each day where it's about self-love and self-care for myself, whether it be just like a 15 minute breathing class or 15 minute little yoga session, even here at home, or if I can get out, then I do. Um, or um, this sounds really silly, but like even 
removing my makeup at the end of the day because I have 15 minutes in the bathroom by myself yeah I mean that's that's what it comes down to for me sometimes that's all I have like um wow because the kids because I have my youngest is three he's, he's still at home super super demanding and I have the three older kids in school mm -hmm. um so it's just a, it's the phase at the moment where I really do have limited time for myself um, so organizing your time is very important, but in order to be able to do everything, I plow through everything. I, I tend to just plow through everything. I, I need the energy to do it. So I do try to take care of myself, um, right. every day. I do some self love type of activity for myself basically is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so pretty much you are just trying your best to go through the day, accomplishing yeah. all the tasks that you are faced with. Yeah. such as your kids and then you know certain certain things do you give yourself a lot of pressure yeah a lot, of, a lot of a lot of mental guilt and like if i'm with the if i'm working a lot then i feel bad that i'm not with the kids sometimes when i'm with the kids i get distracted by work and then i'm not present with my children so i've realized recently that it's not always the quantity of time and the amount of hours that you spend with your kids but it's the quality of time with the time that you are with them you really need to be present for them so mm -hmm. just you know the most important thing is to always be present in everything that you're doing and, and that is and that is one of the hardest things that we yeah. always that we always hear from even the buddhist monks who have no family who have oh, nobody yeah. to be responsible for it's just themselves and and that's why those people they they do not have the obligations and they shave their heads is because they don't need to worry about hair they don't have to worry about makeup they are trying to reduce all the responsibilities that you know us lay people we call lay people um that we have so that we don't have to they don't have to worry about all these extra things to to worry themselves with and yeah. You know, something that I wanted to share with the audience is that I have been married for 21 years. I've been with my husband for 24 years. So I consider myself a very, um, in a very mature state of my relationship with my husband, um, who was also my first boyfriend. And um, it's a very difficult journey because it's not always like, ah, ha, 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 you know, like lovely dovey and, and happy. You have the struggles in, in your life. And what I wanted to always share with women is that it's great to be a mother because children will teach you things that career can never teach you because they are there constantly and there's no day off. And when I talk to people who have no kids, they do not understand. What do you yeah. mean by no day off or no break? They would just be like, oh, just go out and do this. And oh, just go out and do that. We have no. this guilt, right? Just like you said, yeah. we have this guilt. And what I realize is this, is that the guilt is self-made. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the responsibility that we put onto ourselves, feeling that we have to give all of ourselves to our children. Um, and that is why women are selected to be the bearers of kids, not the, the men. And I'm not saying men are um, negative. I, actually, I, I, I would not be with my husband if I'm not, you know, like if I don't love men, I wouldn't be with my husband for many years. But feeling guilt doesn't help with your, your loving of yourself. Um, feeling guilt does not help you to feel empowered to want to create your dreams in the future, even yes. though you may not have the time right now, like you are doing this with me because you want to enhance your, your personal um, development, your growth, and you want to pursue your own career too. What is it that you want to do, Sarisa, for yourself? Let's say we're not talking about children. We're not talking about being a mother. We're not talking about being a wife. What do you want for yourself at the end of 2022? <laughs> you know, I, I have um i have a, a little list of things actually okay and i um but i have been feeling guilty and feeling overwhelmed <laughs> to yeah try to yep. start anything you know um so i've i've um 
I don't know. I don't know if I want to say everything that I have in plan. Maybe I'll do um, once I actually start one of the four main things that I want to do. I okay. will come back on the show and I will explain it and I will okay. it and talk to you about it. But um, but I will talk about the fact that it's been so hard to to start anything that I would like to do for myself. And I've had this discussion with you over lunch by the beach, and you've even told me perhaps it's not the time yet, you can start later even, don't put those pressures on yourself now, maybe you'll be even better at it later or whatever it is that you know I would like to do. Um, and um, so I am um, feeling towards the end of the year right now, like I have all the energy to do it next year, like to start doing something for myself that has nothing to do with my my husband even or, or anything, because I've always worked with him, I've never actually, worked alone mm -hmm. not yet okay um but um i i would like the kids to all be in school first and i would like to see how things go with covid because yeah. it has taken a huge toll on the restaurant business yeah. and it's made us have to work twice as hard to yeah. keep things afloat and to um yeah. to keep it alive right yeah. So, um, so I've, I have a new motto right now just to keep myself sane is just to kind of take things day by day for the moment and just to be as happy as possible every single day without, um, without even thinking about like, oh, I need to be doing this. I need to be doing that. I should be doing this. I'd love to be able to achieve this, those things. I feel like if I don't run towards those goals that I had in my head, I'm a, like a failure or something if I'm not starting immediately and it 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 actually consumes me it makes me not, not a good mother and not just the things that I should be be able to do you know um I mean I wouldn't say I'm a bad mother but I would like to be even better at it too I mean I think, I, think woman, I think as women, I think as women, especially because we we are more sensitive and we are more caring, we get ourselves into a cycle of, and I was just like this before, and I say I was because I'm no longer um, feeling like that. Why is that? Why are Why are you no longer like that? Because my children are grown up. And you're my doing. Children, my children are grown up, and I have pulled away. And I have um, made a clear boundary to my husband of what I'm willing to do with him and what I'm not willing to do with him. And whether right. he accepts it or not, it's up to him uh, because, right. because I cannot deny my own heart's desire to That's part of grow my married. work. Yeah. Yeah. You because need, you need those boundaries. Yeah. And, and, and with you as well, you, I know you have that desire you have that drive to create something of yourself and i i know that feeling i understand that fully even though i do not have four boys i have two boys i'm i didn't have freedom since i was a kid and when i say i didn't have freedom that means because i was working since i was 13 years old i never partied i don't go out and watch movies with my friends i do not have a boyfriend until i met my husband when i was 17 and then I went to college, I work, I get married and I don't party. I don't use drugs. I don't use alcohol. I don't drink. Yeah. I don't do anything that is considered fun. And that's why my coach used to say, Abel, you don't know how to have fun. You just uh -huh. know how to work. And I'm yeah. excellent at working. And because of, yeah, because of this desire to, to, to work and to dr have this drive from when I was young. You wanted to do more. You wanted to work even more. I, I, I it's not that I want to work, but I want to put my energy into knowing how far I can push my abilities. It's to try to understand, for example, for you also, Sarisa, you also want to know how far you can go by doing yes. something on your own, yes. right? Because you are, you are a creator. I mean, we're all humans are meant to be creators, right? Yes. We all want to create something and yes. to feel guilty because we are, limited by energy limited by by time yeah that that's you know in relations to everyone we are limited by time and energy and the feelings that i used to get 
And I wish I can say this to myself back. I was, you know, when I was maybe like your age or even earlier is that you have to have boundaries, especially with your partner, your life partner, that you need to communicate and understand like what you can do realistically and what you cannot do. And, right. and, and to say no, because I didn't, I never said no. Mm -hmm. I never said no to anybody. Wow. My dad wanted something. I do it for him. My mom, she doesn't really ask as my dad asked. My husband would ask something and I put it into his, I put it into first priority. Children. So everybody came first. What about you, Sarisa? How are you taking care of yourself? You know, that's why it's okay. not selfish. Like you yeah. said, it's not selfish at all. Because if you don't have your health and you're laying in bed and you're sick yeah. and your yeah. body is telling you, Sarisa, I'm going to make you sick now so that you have time to rest. That's why you got sick. Yeah. Because your, your body needed rest. Yeah. Yeah. And I exactly. wouldn't even let myself rest, which made myself, which made it worse. <laughs> so yes. it's really not, yeah. I'm yeah. just coming out of the deal now. Yeah. Like finally. Um, I know totally that's precisely that. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I want to, I want to go forward, just be more, um, mindful of the fact that I need to take care of myself as well with, yeah. with, within, within everything that I'm doing and I can't push myself so hard. It's also, it's mentally and physically, right. All of this, like. Definitely. Um, and also they need, I, I just, I feel like at the moment, I, I, once my, my youngest one goes to school, yeah, my schedule can probably be a little bit more organized. Oh yes. Um, this entire year and last year, the kids were on and off going to school as well. So we were Very exhausting. Uh, keeping them online, doing online homeschooling. Yeah. I mean, the past couple of years that the schedules have just been completely impossible to manage especially for for yeah. my type of schedule yeah my type of lifestyle yeah <laughs> my, the kids and everything so um definitely yeah. it's been it, it, it's been very recent that the, like they, they just went back to school like about two three months ago right was that is that what happened yeah. I, I don't even know yeah. what's right yeah so my routine changed now as a result of them going to class again like actual real school <laughs> again yeah. um no i mean i think one of the biggest things that this pandemic has taught me as well is just to take a day, day really um i and and i feel more at peace about it as well like i know what i i have a, an idea as to what the, the near future is supposed to be like and also what my my, my ultimate goal is but um, I don't feel like I'm in such a rush anymore because not everything is certain, you know? Something can change tomorrow completely and all those plans that you've made don't, or perhaps I'm not going to let it affect me as much. Like my perspective of, of not reaching my daily targets or my weekly targets is not as detrimental as it used to be. <laughs> so uh, as you, as you become, as we become uh, more experienced mothers, you will also realize that when you talk to older people, for example, they yes. a lot of them, the ones that are happy, older people, not the grumpy type, they <laughs> let go. They let go. Yeah. They, they said, okay. I, and I'm not saying let go in a way of, I don't give a shit about that. And I don't give a crap about that. That's not what I meant. What I mean is, there are certain things that, for example, that you have no control over, such as how happy your children are when you have done to your ability in this present moment. And I actually wrote a po post about this is that we all have limited knowledge based on our present moment, right? And we, we, we are only able to do the best that we know how as a human being in this yeah. moment in time, not, not because like you, you cannot download information from uh, a mother who has been a mother for 30 years and then be like, okay, download. I know exactly what I need to do now. I'm going to let go of this and let go of this and let go of this. We can't, we have to go through it through yeah. the experience, just yeah. like you're going through now, just like what yeah. I went through before. 
And, yeah. and just to relate to what you were saying is that I had a really, really good partner who was born on exact same day and same year and same month as me. Okay. And I'm not going to tell you my exact birthday, just, you know, just for superstitious uh, thing, but that's awesome. We, we would think same things. And he was very ambitious. Um, he didn't have family and he didn't have children and he had all these big dreams. And then one day he just dropped dead. And literally he was on a treadmill. He was running on his treadmill and he dropped and he had a heart attack and everything was finished over finished. Wow. And he died. He was like 32 or 33. Wow. And what he taught me is that we have to learn to let go of all the things that we cannot do at this moment in time because we are struggling. We are learning. We cannot always be what um, we, we feel we, we can be because we have limited time and limited energy. So I think I care about you very much as my friend and also that I'm speaking as an experienced mother. And what I wanted to ask you is, how do you use your resilience or your positivity to keep yourself sane with all the things that you have put onto your plate? And I say you put onto your plate because you are the one that chose to have children, just like me, even though I complain about having kids sometimes, and I want to hide in the mountain and run away from my husband. Yeah. How do you, how do you keep sane with resilience and positivity um, with all the things that you have created for your life? This is precisely what I've been working. This is a daily, a daily um, task for me. It's a daily <laughs> okay. mindful task. Yeah. And I, and I believe that it's the most important thing to do. Yeah. I, I, what do you do? Like, you have to have a really good morning routine. You tell yourself, I'm, I'm getting straight into it as to how I, um, how I, how I, how I try to be positive, let's say, or I, yeah, okay. you know, <laughs> um, we all have to know, try. I wish it was like a natural outlook for me, but sometimes I'm just a little bit, um, I'm thrown like, like we all are a little bit of a bulk, like a, a curveball out yeah. of nowhere. Yeah. And, and um and it's 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 too much it's overwhelming for me yeah. but um and I go through my phases where suddenly like for three months I'm I'm very um I'm zen and then and then I crash for a yeah. good couple of weeks and then I'm zen again <laughs> so um I need to I I practice um what are they called they're like not incantation and and I just basically remind myself of about four or five different things that I'm super grateful for, like every single morning. Okay. Um, and remind myself how lucky I am to still have like another day, you know, in this beautiful yeah. world of ours. And yeah. that there's so much to do and so much beauty out there in between everything that's horrible and ugly that you might be going through at that very moment. Yeah. There's yeah you need to find the light always, you know, yes. and, and it, you can snap right out of it. You can practice this. And I've been, I think I'm getting a little better at it because the like, um, laughter as well. Like the other day, um, some, like we had horrible news, Jonathan and I about something, but my husband, he's a, he's a bit of a comedian. He likes to always say something super funny. Uh-huh. And we just started laughing our 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 um our asses off basically after That's pretty bad beautiful. news, yeah. and um and I don't know that if it sounds crazy or not, but at that very moment I realized that you can change your mood immediately. Like you you can't change the bad news that you got. Yes, <laughs> but you can change how you react to it. Yeah. You can just go like uh 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 and just go spiraling down a horrible black hole. Or you can, we didn't laugh on purpose, but he, he decided to laugh about something else. It just basically, you change your state of mind, you know, completely. Right. right. Um, you only have this one life. You need to live it in a positive way. You need to be resilient in finding positivity in every situation <laughs> that, um, that happens to you because we all have stresses in our life, whether it's financial stress or 
spousal stress or parent stress or pressures from society, what, you. what you're supposed to be, what you think you're supposed to be. You're fighting yourself. You're fighting what everyone else is trying to tell you what you should you should be doing. Um, so being um, being positive and loving yourself is is the only way to get through all of it. I think it's very important and having faith in and embracing faith and faith and everything that happens to you or that has happened to you. You have to love what's happened to you and what is happening to you. I mean, I, I, I this is what I um, try to do for myself and tell myself. Yeah. <laughs> I, think have, I think you have covered so many wonderful points. And yeah. and just, I just wanted to add this. A long um, talk, a long talk. We need like a three hour podcast. <laughs> so I no, I, I, uh, this always happens. This always happens with all of my guests. We enjoy right. the conversation so much that we always go over half an hour. And it's already over half an hour. But, but yeah. if it's meant to be shared, because we, because sharing and communicating, you know, communicating, that's why I'm a communications coach, because when I'm sharing, when, when others are sharing with me, it's a healing process. Um, it's a, it's a coping, it's a coping. See, see, you see, Sarisa is, you know, just taking care of her kid. Um, but you have covered so many wonderful points just now. Um, and you know, it's also, it's also okay to be unhappy. It's also okay to complain because sometimes you need to just let it out. Right. So I'm also, I'm always supportive of being positive and being aware of your mindset and how you see things, just like what Sarisa suggested. I'm also aware that there are times when you're at the stage in your life where you just don't know how, or you cannot, or you have too much stress and you have to let go of that negativity or that stress in a healthy way. Yeah. Um, Yes, such as through way. exercise, you know, like releasing the stress, like what would you say is a healthy way of letting go of the negativity that, that, that we get oh. stored? Um, you know, a couple of years ago, you told me to look into breath work. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I've been looking into it ever since yeah and practicing uh -huh. i wouldn't say i've been like an expert at all or get or, or i haven't um i've just practiced i've just i've found small little short breathing practices mm -hmm. on the internet it's on youtube actually and mm -hmm. also um bringing my attention back to my breath yes i think breathing is everything it really yeah. is everything for for your for your mind, for your health, for your mental state, your chi, your zen, everything. Like you, um, so if 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 ever you're overwhelmed or just bombarded with anything, you need to go back to your breath. And I will take myself out and go into my room, or even in the shower, or before I go to bed, I'll lay flat on the bed or sit, whatever. And I will breathe in a mindful way for 15 minutes. And I just connect with myself and my breath. And that's working for me more than even exercising or going for a walk by myself on the beach or yoga. And hey, we uh, don't have to find, we have to find what's good for us, right? What works yeah, for us. I did my research on that and, and I found a couple different small examples of how I um, can use it for myself. Yeah. Looking into it, there was, there are, there's quite a few ways of breathing <laughs> for health reasons and for um, mental reasons, anxiety and everything. Yeah. Yeah. My, my good friend, Susana is a breathwork um, practitioner. And when she did one session with me, um, I can't explain this because this is something that you have to do in real life with a real certified breathwork practitioner such as Susana and I really want to promote her because what she does is so amazing and you will only know what it's like if you decide to commit and take that plunge to do it with her such as for example like with any coaches 
you have to actually decide to, to take the commitment to commit yourself to really try it and do it before you really know what it's like. Um, but breath work, it's bringing you back to your body and back to your mind without having to pay anything for it. It's free. You have it yeah. all the time with you every single minute, second of your day. And it's so important. Um, and I does wonders for people. I have not yes. heard that from just you. I've heard that from a lot of, a yeah. lot of my friends. Um, yeah. Some of my friends have even walked back into the past and released some sort of hidden yes. yeah. and will cry from breathing. Yes. Yeah. Because she will release some, something. Yeah. It's amazing. You, yeah, yeah exactly. I'm, exactly. I'm her. I need to go myself. I haven't been yeah. able to go through the whole process yet, but even just um, small little baby steps help too. It's the first yeah. step to be aware of it. So exactly. thanks for introducing it to me as well, though. No, no problem. Then, you have to choose your, your, I mean, when you're ready, you do it right? When you're ready and when you can, then you do it. Okay. So our podcast is going into 45 minutes now, and I don't want to ask the last question because I don't have time. Is there something that is like funny, something that is um, like a story or, you know, a quote or something that we would like to share with the audience that kind of help them to remind them of, you know, what is it that you want to share with the audience about resilience, about even your own your own life, what you're learning right now. What do you have to share with with all for, for all for all for all that's out there for all women for all men. <laughs> yeah, for all of us. Um, life is a journey. <laughs> it really is. I feel like I'm about to die or something. No, um, I think um, you got to take things light. You got to be positive and you, you have to know that you can't take anything for granted. Be grateful. And you can always find, it's always something to be grateful for. And there's no time, no time to be, to be negative. And you need to work on it every single day. You can't possibly be positive every single day. And mm -hmm. it's okay to have to work on it as well. I used to think I needed to be like born with it or something. That's like, an, oh. I, or if I, well, yeah. once I found the solution, why am I not feeling like this every day? It was just a really weird thing, but like I needed to be mindful of that so that I can work on it. It's like a muscle that I need to keep working on so yeah. that um, perhaps I'll get really good at it one day. Yes. But um, just don't, don't, uh, don't, don't give, give up, up on, on yourself. yourself. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Keep, keep, keep doing it every single day, even if it's not perfect or not right. You need to keep going and doing the best you can. Yeah. And Sarisa is the perfect example of what it means to keep going because you, every time I see you, you remind me of my past and I wish I could take away some of your um, mm -hmm. stress that I can see that you go through. I mean, obviously you always try to, you know, put the best face forward and be positive and I can see you doing that. But I, I always say to my clients, you have to choose what you think. You have to choose the thoughts and you also have to choose um, what advice you take from whom. You cannot take advice from everyone because it's good for them, but it may not work for you. And people cannot get sick for you. They cannot take away your illness for you. They cannot swallow food for you. And they cannot make you healthy for you. Everything comes from yourself. And, and so at the end of the day, it's always about how do you take care of your well being, your mindset? Are you reflective enough to know why you think that, what you think? And then where, is the, where are those thoughts leading you? And even if you cannot have time to reflect, just like what Sarisa said, which I think is just brilliant and so simple because the, the most simplest things sometimes are brilliant. And that is just try to appreciate every single moment of your life. And I know it's very, very hard, but counting your blessings can help. Remembering that time is fleeing. Nothing ever stands still. 
your kids are always growing, right? Yes. And all four of them will be in school very soon. And yes. then you will have, then you will have at least six hours or five, if not more for yourself. Yeah, that's a, it's incredible. That's yeah. a lot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's not 15 minutes, it's five hours, you yeah. know? And then you can really focus on what do you want to do? And then you can help yourself. And then you can, you know, use, use whatever it is that you have done to help yourself to maybe hire another person to help you or, you know, whatever it is that you, you manage with your life to make your life easier and, yeah. and not, not having to feel guilty about it is yeah. it's a progress. It's a journey, just like you said. So I just want to say thank you so much for the advice that you're giving to, you know, the many women who are, you know, following you on your page. Can you tell people where they can find you and follow you on your social media? I am Sarisa Jalabert. I changed my, my name. Sarisa okay. Jalabert, J-A-L-L-A-B-E-R-T. Sarisa. Yeah. I think my name is written on your, on your yes. page. Yes, yes, yes. Here. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm mainly on, I'm mainly active on my Instagram for my stories of my life with my kids and my restaurants. Excellent. And so uh, I will put that down here. in the yes. description yes. In, Thank in, you. My YouTube, <laughs> in my YouTube so that people can go in and follow you there. Um, mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stop the recording now on live and I'm going to stop the recording on the zoom. And I just want to say thank you so much to everyone who is watching. If you want to be a guest in the future, please go to my website, find your voice Asia and look at influencers here and fill out the form. And I would love to hear from you what you want to hear, you know, who you want me to interview, because there's a lot of amazing, amazing people. And the people that I interview are not just based in Phuket, like Sarisa. They can be anywhere in the world because we're doing this over Zoom. So if you're interested in being my guest and showing your able story, I would love to hear from you. So thank you so much, Sarisa, for your time. Thank you. I'll thank see you. you. Soon.